I'm going to be making the decision that I want to do. That's going to make me happy, mad, sad, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think they're intertwined because I am my own God. That makes sense. Okay. Logan. Uh, I, I think, um, <laughs> are you stressed? <laughs> no, I'm not stressed. No, no, no. I just think it's, I think it just gets caught back really fast. I'm psychologist Dr. Brian Violet. Today I'll be sitting down with the Utah boys, longtime gaming friends of mine, three brothers from the great state of Utah. We'll be talking about the integration of psychology and faith and what that means for our perceptions of suffering. This is the Catholic Center Show. All right, so let's let's move over to faith a little bit and, and spirituality and religion and what like any one of those kinds of broad areas of something beyond the material world. Uh, do you think those things, how do you think, and this might be a unique question or a unique response from each of you. Do you think those things are related psychology and spirituality or are they not? I think they're not supposed to. They're not supposed to be I, related. Yeah. But I think that nowadays religion, they're intertwined with each other because religion is supposed to be spiritual and psychology is, so you can use psychology with yourself and with other people, correct? Mm -hmm. So using psychology and religion, you can use it to your own advantage. And it starts to become less and less about religion, I feel like. Mm. But I think I think the, so they're supposed to be separate. Okay. I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a throw a curveball at everybody real quick. But uh, right. how I – how so uh, re religion – I, I inter, I intertwine religion or, you know, uh, spirituality with, uh, mental, uh, psychology. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, not a hot take clearly, but I'm, I am my own God and I am mm -hmm. my own world. And however I react and what I create in my world and my whatever is how happy I'm going to be. So like, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that there's going to be, you know, an afterlife or whatever the case. Um, but like, if there is, which is cool, no hating or whatever the case, it's like, I'm, I'm in control and I'm not going to rely on someone else or whatever the thing I'm going to be making the decision that I want to do. That's going to make me happy, mad, sad, whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think they're intertwined because I am my own god if that makes sense okay logan uh i i think um, are you stressed <laughs> no i'm not stressed. No, no no i just think it's i think it just gets caught back really fast but like i think um yeah no i'm not stressed at all no i just i just think that like i think they have to be intertwined in my opinion like i think i think it's a very independent answer on everybody but i think if you're like a very uh a uh, very religious, very faithful person. I, my, my two cents is that like your psychology is very dependent on that. Like I think, especially when I think about Christianity or something like that, right? Like I think about that relationship with Jesus, God, you know, whatever it is, I think that becomes very uh, important in your psychology and, and, and in your well being. And you know what I mean? I think that's taught in, in the religion usually. Uh, so I think for me, like, 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 like not, not for me personally, I guess for my opinion on this is that every person independently, it, like it, it does matter. And if you are not religious, right, if you're agnostic, if you're atheist or whatever, right, like it still is important because that's not a part of the equation, right? Like that's, that you're only, you're, you only believe in, in, in yourself or whatever it is. You don't believe in these other things. Or it explains so religion. Like, like an atheistic view would say that psychology explains religion, that religion is nothing more than psychology, right? Right. Yes. I feel like, I mean, some, some atheists. Yeah. I think, I mean, I think there's like, there's like this, the spectrum, right? Like, like I'm agnostic, right? Like, so like, like, and I don't, so I don't believe in a higher billing or anything like that. Right. So you consider that atheism, but like, I also, I think that there's a spectrum, right? Where the, there's certain atheists that believe that like, there's absolutely not a God. There's absolutely nothing out there. And so it's all explained by us trying to create some kind of mental image of, of God and all of those things to explain the world. I think I'm probably on, 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 on a spectrum over here where I, I'm agnostic because I just don't believe anything, but not necessarily because I think that we're all just making up things in the sky or whatever, mm. um, but just because I don't. So but your agnosticism is not the typical agnosticism, which is like 
I just don't know. It could be true. You think it's not true? I mean, part of that is part of that is part of that is that I I just don't know, and I don't have a, a an internal belief system that believes that there is something more. Yeah. So part of it is that like I don't know, and and, and I think like. Like I, my internal answer is that like if, if one day I walked out and I was like, yeah, they're like, I believe in Jesus or I believe in a God or, or something like that, then I, then that would change. Right. But I mean, that, that's not, that's not how it is. And so, so for me, I don't believe anything in that. Therefore I'd say agnostic. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I, I wish in some ways this is the challenge of having four people in a conversation. Like each one of you, I want to like, I want to ask like follow up questions to each one of you. Um, yeah, I think from the, my standpoint, from a Catholic, well, not all Catholics are, uh, hold on, let me see, let me start over. Are you on the spectrum of a Catholic? I, I, <laughs> <He's> Catholic. <laughs> I'm Catholic, yeah. No, for me, for me, I think that, like, you can think of your relation, your spirituality as your relationship with God and your psychology as your relationship with everything else. But they're so deeply interwoven in the sense that who I, like, how I relate to others is reflective of my relationship with God and how I relate to God is going to influence how I relate to other people and, and, and not just other people, but relate to cooking dinner tonight, anything psychological, like anything that has any experience has a psychological dimension to it. And so um, I also think that if you believe, and I also should say this, I don't fault anyone for their beliefs. Even from a Catholic perspective, I believe that faith is a, is a gift that's not something that can be attained via reason. And it's a mystery why people have faith at certain points in their lives, why they have it, why they don't like it's complex about why they lose it. It's like, it's, it's very mysterious process. So I, I'm cool with whatever I'm just explaining from a Catholic viewpoint that uh, from a Catholic viewpoint, you never have a psychological experience. That's not also spiritual. It's kind of like when you think of your psychology, you never have a thought without emotion. Like we have to break it down into thoughts and feelings and will and, you know, and a body, but like, it's all one experience at one time. So from a Catholic viewpoint, it's experientially, it, it's always occurring. I'm talking to you, but I'm also relating to God at the same time, or it has like, there's a, there's a, uh, uh, implica uh, an implication or a consequence or a relevancy to what's going on as we're talking right now for my spiritual life and my relationship with God. I also think that, uh, people's psychological experiences, especially in their home life has a strong influence on their faith later on. You know, the first experience we have of God comes from our parents. So all the stuff you say about your parents as a kid, will you protect me? Will you guide me? Will you nurture me? Will you provide for me? Right. And the answer to those questions is really important. And not that it's ever explicitly said that way, but implicitly through the relationship that you say those same things about God, if you believe in a monotheistic one God, or one would want to, if he's real, say those things to God. Like that is the that is the monotheistic proposition that God loves you like a parent. Like, a, mm -hmm. like Christianity is a trinity. God sent his son and you're adopted into a relationship with the father. He's a father to you. And so if you've got a bad experience with your father, I mean, how does God the father sound to you? Probably not so great, right? <laughs> Right. Not so great, you know. Um, I do think that quite often the way religion is communicated by people is is very problematic and filtered in, filtered through their own psychology. I think this was kind of Andrew's point: is that one can use psychology or uh, uh, use psychology under the guise of being religious to coerce, to control, to guilt trip, to manipulate. I mean, all the way to having wars over it, you know, right. which is about power, you know. Uh, so there's there's certainly an unhealthy use of faith and spirituality and religion. Uh, but I don't know that I would separate it from my viewpoint. I wouldn't separate psychology and religion in that way. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if oh, that makes sense. There is a, a time in which people um, try to answer psychological questions with religion. And that's a, that's a, yeah. that's a problem. Like not yeah. acknowledging that there's a psychological dimension to a, even to a religious experience. I mean, I just remember growing up when I would, when I was just as a child, there were moments when I didn't have a, a strong faith. I was just kind of a kid and, uh, you know, I would just kind of express 
what I was going through from a kid's perspective and the pain and frustration or whatever, anger or sadness, whatever I was going through. And the answer was something like offer it up, offer it up to God, like pray about it. And it's like, this is from my point, vantage point at th- that time was like, this has nothing to do with God. Like <laughs> now, now I'm like, actually it did have to do with God. Like, you know, but when, depending on where someone w- like is, like they don't want to hear that. That's invalidating their psychological experience, you know? Right. But I think, I think as an adult, and I think the important part here is that like, like as a kid, I think like you view it or, or like, you know, my, my two cents, I guess, right. It's like, as a kid, you view it as like, oh, I'm praying and it'll all f- figure itself out. Whereas I think right. as an adult, right. It's that balance where, you know, yeah, I'm going to pray, but also I'm going to do the work. Right. Like, and that work can be understanding sure. to take the advice to, you know what I mean? That, that internal feeling and acting on it. Right. And I think that's that, 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 that important separation is that when I, have conversations with with my closest friends around these topics it's always like did you pray did you get a feeling or did you get like some some insight or some answers and then like how did you act and how did you move from there to do something right there? and that, i think that's that tie-in i guess yeah well what's interesting too to me is when you said it'll all work out if i pray well let's unpack what we mean by it will all work out like all work out according to what the way you want things to go i i, I think i think like a lot of I mean, you know, every, I mean, everybody can have their two cents, but I think when I was a kid and I prayed, yeah. right, like I think we all grew up in a, you know, in a, in a religious area, you know, and, you know, I think when I was a kid and I prayed, I just assumed that I was going to pray hard and then like God would figure it out. For me. Where did you and learn like, that? Like, I I think I was told that. I think for the most part, I feel like I was told that like if you prayed and you, you know, you were a good person, yeah. that like it would happen and it would figure out, right? And, and, in, and In very so concrete like, terms? Like if I want, if I want a hundred dollars, I can pray for it. And I get my one hundred dollars. No, I think it has. Like I think it definitely was more abstract, and it and it and it always is, right? I think that definitely is. But I think it was very much like a, you know, you know, this person, you know, succeeded or do well because you know they they they, they prayed enough, right? And they were and they they did what oh, they were supposed to do their end, right? I see. So good good things in life will happen to you if you pray. Right. And the things that you want, right? Like mm. I think those two things, right? I don't think you got a hundred bucks, but I think if you wanted money, right? Like it, you wouldn't pray about money, but you'd pray about success or, or being able to work hard enough. Like sometimes it was the good end, right? You'd pray yeah. to like have the strength, right? Or the, or the knowledge, right? Like, like the prayer to kind of, you know, get where you want to be. Right. I think that was probably the healthy version of it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, but like, I think when I was a kid, I definitely was always like, okay, you know, like, I think when you're a kid, you definitely pray for little stuff. Like I want this for Christmas. Or whatever sure. Is, but, when you're in very you concrete know, terms uh, when you're a child. Yeah. Right. Exactly, want, yeah. Right. But yeah. And, and then later it becomes a little more abstract, but even on an abstract level, I think, I think uh, that happened as a kid too. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's really common among Christian circles. Um, and it, within Catholic circles, I don't think that's what the Catholic faith actually teaches. It's this idea that like, if I pray and I'm a good person, good things will happen to me in this life. And like, that's not what the church teaches. Like, I mean, like the Catholic church, uh, the model for, from a Catholic perspective is that like, well, Christ <laughs> was crucified. <laughs> like it didn't quite work out in this life for him. You know, it's, it's so there's this idea that it does work out ultimately it does work out ultimately in the next life. Sometimes prayers are answered not in a way that you expect. Sometimes good is drawn from suffering in a way that is not something you can anticipate. So in the sense, it always does work out. But suffering is a part of the human experience from a Catholic perspective. It's it's deeply mm-hmm. interwoven. I mean, the difference, like oftentimes you see Protestant crucifixes. There's no, there's not, they're not a crucifix. They're a cross. A crucifix, Catholic is like, here he is. Like blood coming out, life is filled with suffering. And when you're in a dark moment, that's what you want to see. You want to have a God that can suffer and and uh, that suffers and um, can identify with how hard it is for you. Like a Catholic view would say he came to suffer with us, not to take all suffering away. Ultimately, yes, in the next life, but this life is filled with suffering and we can draw meaning from it. We can draw good from it. The worst thing that could ever happen the son of God was killed from that was the greatest thing that could ever happen, which was salvation. And that moment happens in our lives over and over and over again. So from a Catholic viewpoint, suffering is a little bit different. It's not like you just pray and you're a good person. And you don't suffer anymore or life's like things are going to go your way. Just, we know from experience that doesn't hold up bad it things get better. Right. I think but, that's part of that. Right. But we all die. 
Yeah, but that would be that's what I mean by a grow a changing shifting relationship to suffering. It's not hard to suffer. The worst thing in the world is meaningless suffering. Right. That's the worst thing. Suffering's not the worst thing. It's suffering that doesn't have meaning. If you're suffering because you love someone, you're choosing to suffer, well now your relationship to suffering has changed. Can you discover meaning in your experiences? And I think from a Catholic perspective, that's what is offered. That your suffering can be informed with meaning. It's not as, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to besmirch other faiths or, or Christian faiths. I just can't speak for their perspective. And I know it is common uh, to have that view that like my life will go well if I pray and I'm a good person. It's just, that's, that's not a Catholic viewpoint. It's not. 